in this video I will show you how you can do shading assignment within um, Renderman. So um, just a bit of theory uh, before, if I jump into Maya. So this is the way the, the character file is made uh, when you define your character. And uh, as you can see here, uh, my character is made of a couple of geometry parts like um, uh, undercoat. My uh, undercoat is made of a t-shirt group. My t-shirt group can be, will be uh, a t-shirt mesh and a harm mesh that will be uh, my uh, upper body for my characters. And um, what I would like to do is uh, figure out what's uh, the shading assignment here. So as soon as the mesh is loaded, we remember the name of the shading group and we remember the name of the shaders and we may have a couple of shading attributes here. So if we take a look at the t-shirt here, it's going to be assigned to uh, a shading group which is called Man and it's also t-shirt SJ. So this here, um, this is the name of the shading group of the material I would like to replicate uh, into Katana. So I can jump into Katana here and I can create like a network material here and I'm going to specify it's going to be uh, um, BXDF uh, renderman. So what I want is rename that node, uh, my name is t-shirt SJ, and I want to create like a um, here man shading, shading node, which will be my material here, oops, out there. And it's going to be, the interface is going to be like a, a Pixar Disney. Okay, I'm going to merge that. And here it is. Um, the problem here is that uh, if I just render it like this, uh, Renderman will not, uh, as just an optimization, as that shader is not assigned to any geometry, Renderman will not export this into the rip file. Uh, because uh, it doesn't know that the column cache node uh, needs it, so it's just an optimization saying that it's not used within the scene, so I just skip this. Um, and another thing is that even if I create a geometry and assign that shader, uh, to that geometry to force the export, the name uh, of that uh, material will be changed uh, based on the, the Katana conventions. The way uh, shaders can be overridden requires the, the vendors to uh, figure out a way to change the name so they're always unique even if they're uh, assigned to uh, multiple geometries. So to um, uh, counteract this, the people at Renderman came with a solution where you just need to create like a Kierman uh, global statement node here and if we go into that node and um, just go into the layout and go into the all, we can go into the plugin here and uh, check that export tag material. So that will that will ask Renderman to force the export of some material which are tagged. So how do I tag the material? Um, I just have to add an attribute set here. Put that next to the material if I'd like to say that the material I would like to um, tag is going to be uh, that one there and the name of the attribute I want to use is going to be that that attribute here. So if I set uh, an attribute name called material.peerman export material which is going to be an integer and I set it to one that means that here that guy will be exported and will be, uh, won't be renamed. The name which will be used will be that name here. And if I just render this now, I should get my t-shirt meshes being assigned to my uh, characters. So now my t-shirts get assigned to that Pixar Disney. Uh, so let's say I would like to have a, a variation on top of that uh, blue color. Let's say I want, have to, I want to have a different color. So one way I could um, uh, do this is to use uh, user data or attributes. So if I check my t-shirt here, it has a... Uh, shading attribute which is called man and it's also t-shirt texture color so I can copy this which has a random value between minus one and one on every RGB channel and uh, what I could just do is just uh, use uh, another Pierman shading node there and uh, that Pierman shading node there will just be like a pixel attribute so that's a default uh, shader that they provide so I can just uh, output the RGB and put that into the base color and uh, it just asks for a variable name, so that variable name is going to be the same name that the one that I put into Maya. And uh, if I just uh, render that now, I should get all my variations. Hmm. Okay, let's figure out what's wrong here. 
uh, it's a uh, yeah sorry I should have specified it's a it's a vector here um, because within Maya the value I set is a vector so here I need to specify it's a vector as well and I want to make sure that the RGB is okay so that should be good so let's try it again. Okay, cool. So yeah, I've got a random color here. So you could switch textures, you could do whatever you like to using the fixer attribute and uh, a couple of uh, shaders and the shading graphs. Um, one thing I also want to show you here is uh, maybe um, just to make your workflow and pipeline easier is that um, most of the time, I, I guess you're gonna do your look dev within Katana and uh, you won't be able to figure out what are the name of the shaders of every meshes um, here it's convenient the name of the shaders are exactly set up the way I would like to because I imported my character within Maya first but maybe you will do your look that within Katana and the name of the shaders will be defined within Katana so you you what you want to avoid to bring those into Maya make a list and give that to uh, the crowd TV so they figure out uh, the names and put them manually it's not really elegant so maybe you would like to override um, the shaders the name of the shaders for every mesh within Katana directly so Starting from uh, Golem 6.2.1, uh, within the Golem cache node, we introduce uh, within the advanced attribute, we introduce something which is called shading overrides. So that allows you to override uh, the shading assignment, which has been defined here. So uh, obviously, you will know the name of the meshes. So I'm gonna, just going to copy here. Let's say the T-shirt. I want to change that shading override. I don't want it to be named that 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 way anymore. So I'm just going to copy the name of the mesh. Most of the time, you'll get your character uh, within your environment, I guess, with all the meshes. So it's easy for you to figure out what's the name of the mesh. And you can say, OK, this is going to be my mesh. I would like to uh, override the shading. And uh, I'm going to rename this just for the sake of it. I'm going to remove like torso. I'm just going to call it ManMD uh, T-shirt SJ. And um, here, if I do this, what I want to do is say, OK, that T-shirt um, mesh will be assigned to that shader. Uh, and I can put a separator and put as many rules as, as I would like to here. So for every mesh here, I can reassign another shading group. Um, I may want to update my attribute set here um, because the name has changed. Okay, so here the name has changed. It's not the same name which is stored within Maya, but still, thanks to the shader override, if I render, I should get my T-shirt uh, being shading properly with that um, shader, which has been renamed. And here you go. So um, I hope uh, this makes sense and uh, see you in the next video.